Hi, Allure, I'm Nina Dobrev, and this is my 10-minute beauty routine. I already did my hair. I had it, I straightened it out because I have really frizzy hair. So I already did that, so I'm just gonna take my ponytail out. Voila. Okay, so the first thing I do is skincare because it's so important and I love a good serum. I have my Dr. Sturum. Hyaluronic acid brings the moisture and plumpness back into your skin. So I put that on first to give my face a clean, moisturized palette. Then I go on to my second serum, which is Fitner's Daughter. Put that on. This one I like to pat on top of my skin. And the last serum I use is Sunday Riley. This is a vitamin C serum, and it's super important in the mornings to get that vitamin C in your skin, like nutrition for your face. Of course, at the same time, the lips are on your face, and I have this amazing La Neige. This is a sleeping mask, but honestly, I wear it all day, every day, and especially on planes, because it's so drying when you're on a flight, and this is so yummy, and smells so good. The last step of my skincare before I apply my makeup is Supergoop's Unseen Sunscreen. It's super, super, super goop important to wear sunscreen to protect yourself from potentially skin cancer. It's sort of like a primer as well for your makeup so your makeup stays on better. Now the first thing I do when I apply my makeup is I use Dior's Skin Corrector under my eyes. It's a little bit thicker and provides more coverage in the under eye area, which I am sensitive to because I don't sleep as much as I probably should, so I get dark circles and under eye puffiness. Kind of do a dollop everywhere like that in the spots that need the most coverage. I take the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation and I dab it on my hand. And then now, I take it off my hand with the Beauty Blender. And I'll dab the spots. And it's also important to like kind of pat the Beauty Blender versus like long strokes because the Beauty Blender, the reason why it's so great is it mimics your skin and the pores and it kind of pushes it into the pores and really gets it in there so that it looks like a second skin. I've learned a lot of these makeup tips from a lot of the extremely talented artists that I've gotten to work with over the years, whether it's on set or on a photo shoot. I've taken at least one or two things from each one and learned how to do this on my own at home. And I kind of leave the under eye for last because it sort of settles as well. The dabbing also helps with not pulling the skin unnecessarily. Clay de Peau Concealer. A little stick here. I don't know why whenever I do my makeup, I do this like face, I've noticed. When I watch these tutorials <laughs> afterwards, I'm always like, why are you doing that? And yet every time I'm doing it. Now next up is blush. I will be using Pat McGrath Labs. So I use a big brush from Milk Studios and I dab it on my hand a little bit to get some of the excess off so it doesn't come on too aggressively. And kiss face and go up the apples and then up into the hairline here. And then I even go across my jaw and down my neck a little bit. It's really important to make sure to put foundation on your neck as well as your face. Now the next thing I'm gonna use, Pat McGrath also makes a really great shimmering highlighter. So I like to, again, Dust some of it off. I put it right above the blush, up here to highlight the cheek. And then again, a little in the hairline, a little above the lip, right here. And if I have a smaller brush, I'll go right here under the eyebrow to sort of highlight that against the brow, which leads me to the next thing, eyebrows. I like to use this Rowan pencil. 
I love a good thick brow. It's so funny how in the early 2000s, having really skinny eyebrows was very trendy and I remember tweezing and tweezing and tweezing until I had nothing left. And then the thick brow came in and thank goodness because my brows are naturally very thick. So I like to fill it in and I have these little like bald spots right here on this one side and then another one over here. So I definitely go over that specific side a little bit more than the others. After the brows are done, I use Benefit's 24 hour brow setter. This is an eyebrow gel that really stays on for a while, which I like, because I have been known to jump into a pool or two at a party. I've been kind of brushing them upwards first, kind of against the grain of the hair, so that they stick out like crazy. Looks like a Tim Burton movie almost. And then I, on the other side, the brush, kind of rein them in if I have to, if they went too far in either direction. And the great thing about this product is that the brush is very precise, so you can really manipulate each hair if there's one out of place where you don't like it. But yeah, there we go, these are some wild brows. Now, if I'm going out, I like to do a little more with the eyes and play around with all kinds of different colors. So today, I'm gonna do Charlotte Tilbury's palette. I do like a little rose gold, goldy, neutral toned vibe. So I'll start with the lighter one on the lash lid. What's great about these palettes is that you can sort of, it's a one-stop shop. They kind of have everything for the eye. So then for the crease, I'll do a little bit of the darker color just in here to give the eye a little dimension. And then on the lid afterwards, do a little sparkle if we're going out dancing. Now I should have mentioned you should probably do the eyeshadow first before you do your foundation because it can fall down onto the foundation that you worked really hard to just perfect. There we go, we got a little sparkle. For the last step, I like to use the lightest color palette on the inside edges of the eye right here. I have to grab my powder brush, kind of take off the eyeshadow that may have fallen underneath. Maybe put a little bit more concealer to fix that spot. Quick little dab, like a so. Final two steps, the exciting part. Honest Beauty makes a really pretty lip gloss. This one has a little bit more color. Put it on, use my finger sometimes to spread it out. And it gives you this like deeper sort of matte color. And then afterwards on top of that, I use a Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss. This guy sort of adds dimension to the matte color. So to just dab it on, on top so that it doesn't take away from the first color, but it just adds a little shimmer and shine. I like to call these kissable lips. Second to last, but not least, we have Hourglasses Mascara. Do a quick little dab. And the very final, final, final step is setting spray. You do not want to do all this work and then 10 minutes later, kiss someone or hug someone or say hello or everything starts melting as the night goes on. So I like to use Urban Decay's setting spray. I do a quick little swipe. You wait a few seconds for it to dry and your makeup doesn't move for 24 hours, for better or for worse. So that is my 10 minute beauty routine. Thank you so much and See you on the next one.